Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. We've got a heavyweight prize fight tonight for the bragging rights to be the number one best place to live in Indiana. Wearing the white trunks with the blue and red stripes is the city of Fishers. And in the opposite corner, wearing the shamrock green trunks is the city of Westfield. We have 15 rounds scheduled for this championship event. And here we have the bell. Round one, let's talk claim to fame. Fishers has been honored many, many times in recent decades, but the big punch came in 2017 when Money Magazine named it the number one best place to live in the entire United States. Westfield counters with a very respectable list of accolades, topped off by being named by Money.com in 2020 as the number one best suburb in the entire United States. So let's call round one a draw. Round two, let's talk about their PR departments. While Fishers proudly boasts a long list of all their achievements on their websites, it took me 20 minutes of hard searching to find anything about what Westfield has won. Hands down, this round goes to Fishers. Round three, let's talk location. Now, Fishers is situated along this Castleton section of Indianapolis and adjacent to both Noblesville and Carmel. That's a boatload of amenities to have access to. On the other hand, Westfield is the northernmost suburb of Indianapolis, and it has direct access only to Carmel and less so to Noblesville. So this is another big round for Fishers. Round four, let's talk traffic. Fishers has the worst traffic in the entire metro area while Westfield is pretty quaint by comparison. This one is hands down Westfield. Round five, let's talk jobs. Fishers has its own manufacturing and distribution centers. It's got a lot of financial headquarters, plus their own services, and you can commute from there to Castleton and Carmel and Noblesville. Westfield can commute to Carmel and has their own services. That's about it. So, hey, this one goes to Fishers. We're one third of the way through, and Fishers has a commanding lead. <laughs> Round six, let's talk safety. Hey, the cops in both cities are bored, bored stiff. Need we say more? This one's a boring round, it's a draw. Round seven, let's talk schools. The Fisher School System is ranked number eight in the entire state, but Westfield is ranked sixth. Plus, it's got Garen Catholic, which is a great school. This is a hard fought round, but this one goes to Westfield. Round eight, let's talk medical and healthcare. Fisher sports two hospitals plus many ancillary buildings. Westfield has one hospital and fewer ancillary buildings. They rely on Carmel's many options. This one's a tough round to judge. We're gonna call it a draw. Round nine, let's talk events. Both have a good slate of special events but Westfield boasts its own field of dreams, the Grand Park Sports Complex. Now, Fishers is flurrying late with the development of its event center, which will open later this year, but that's too late for this fight. This round goes to Westfield. So after a slow start, Westfield has fought back and it is now neck and neck. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Round 10, let's talk music. Westfield has its Jam at the Junction and Cool Creek Park series, but it's no match for Fishers with its Nickel Plate, Symphony on the Prairie, and easy access to Ruoff Music Center. Fisher scoring big this round. Round 11, let's talk Parks and Rec. Per capita, the two are about even, but, and it's a big but, Fishers has Geist Reservoir. Fishers with a big punch to close out the round. Round 12, let's talk golf. Westfield has only one public course and must rely on great opportunities, but they're in Noblesville and Carmel. Fishers has that same access, but has been rated by several golf magazines as one of the most underrated golfing communities in the entire country. Hey, and plus it has top golf. It's a knockdown for Fishers. And it now appears Fishers has Westfield on the ropes. Round 13, let's talk shopping. Fisher sports the yard and easy access to Hamilton Town Center, Highway 37 big box stores, and the Castleton area. Westfield, on the other hand, has Greyhound Pass and easy access to Carmel and Clay Terrace. This one's a slight win for Fishers, I think. Nearing the end, round 14, dining. Fishers has the yard and easy access to Hamilton Town Center and the Castleton area. Westfield has Park Street and less easy access to Carmel. This round goes to Fishers. Easy. 
Okay, the bell sounds for the 15th and final round. The town center, we're looking for the heart and soul of the community. Both have the same game plan. Fishers is at least a decade ahead with its nickel plate district. Fishers coasts to the final bell. After Westfield drew even after round nine, Fisher scored six wins in a row to easily overshadow Westfield in this head-to-head -head competition to determine the top suburb in Indiana. Hey, the truth is they're both great places to live and to raise a family. Fisher's is about 15 years ahead in fully developing, but Westfield is determined and making the same kind of strides. Another 15 years, and who knows who the winner might be. And in the final analysis, it's really about personal preference what you like most. They both have a ton to offer. Hey, in all the hype, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team. And if you're asking, should I move to Westfield, Indiana or Fishers, Indiana? Hey, let me know how I can be of service. Hey there, over the years, I've worn lots of hats in the real estate industry. So today I'm gonna share in this video what they were, what I've done, and most importantly, how that can benefit you. Hey, I bought my first house while I was still in college. So yes, I've been a first time home buyer. And if you are a first time home buyer, I know what that feels like. And I've made systems that help so that you come to learn what is going to happen next. So that it takes some of that anxiety out of the whole transaction and makes it a lot more enjoyable experience. Hey, six months later, I bought my first duplex and fixed it up. What a learning curve that was. I can remember we were in the kitchen and we were uh, hooking up the gas range. It's the first time I'd ever done this, okay? And all of a sudden we had flames and my buddy grabs a bucket of really nasty water that we'd use to clean the floor and he throws it over on me and oh God. Now, hey, these years later, I, I ran the uh, gas lines for my entire house and for my barn put in the furnace, water heaters, everything, okay? So I learned something new every day and I still do. That work led to being a contractor. You know, we were those guys that had uh, the sign on their truck, you know, like no job too big or too small. The biggest job we ever did was we uh, rehabbed a 42 unit apartment project. I mean, we didn't take it to the studs, but it was pretty darn close. The most interesting job we ever did was we lifted a house up off the foundation, tore out the basement walls, then relayed all the basement walls and set the house back down on the foundation. Hey, because of that kind of experience, I can walk through a house with you and I can point out opportunities and I can answer your questions about, can we open up this wall or can we, whatever the case might be. Hey, and when it's all said and done, I know a guy that can do all those things that you might want done. And you know what? They do good work, they're reliable and they're affordable. The next hat I wore was property manager. Had something like 500 tenants I was responsible for. And so today I'm an affiliate, or my company is an affiliate of the Key Renter Indianapolis North franchise. And so we can help you with all of your property management needs if you're wanting to buy a house for an investment purpose. This led to me being a builder of single family homes, apartments, condominiums. So when it comes to new construction, it wouldn't be my first rodeo, which means to you, I can be a difference maker for your benefit. Too many people have bad experiences with builders. I can put my experience to work for you facilitating successful outcomes with new construction homes. It was kind of a natural outgrowth from builder to developer and I oversaw the engineering and the state highway cuts and putting down new streets and sewer lines and water lines, building in all kinds of weather, all kinds of building sites. Remember one down in Brown County, we were literally hanging off the hillside, uh, putting up uh, siding in about 40 uh, mile an hour winds. Wasn't a lot of fun, but we got it done. Hey, I've also done planning and zoning work is my development process and I do that for clients now. And that's something that can come in real handy when people are buying ground or want to build their own house on their own piece of ground. I did a little work way back in the day as a home inspector, which means to you I can drill down into the reports and I can work for the best outcome for you under the circumstances. For several years, I was an appraiser, conventional FHA, VA. Again, I know the drill. I know how to read the report and I know what can be done about it, which means to you have a greater likelihood of the deal closing. For 17 years, I was a mortgage lender. In fact, I grew a mortgage broker to become the second largest mortgage broker in the state that year. I know the ropes and can at times make you aware of opportunities that will literally make dreams possible in your specific situation. 
As a mortgage lender, one of my specialties was construction lending, including rehab financing. I can help turn a house with good bones into the home you want before you even move into it. Or I can help you to build your dream home on your own piece of ground. About 15 years ago, I worked as a commercial real estate due diligence inspector across the United States and Canada for the great uh, large Wall Street banks and investment firms. I worked all the way from Calgary to Charleston and from Toronto to Biloxi. Um, I did about 500 properties a year and this was everything from multifamily apartment projects to factories, huge distribution centers, grocery stores, restaurants, hospitals, doctor's offices, retirement homes, high rise office buildings. Hey, I got those assignments because I could walk into any market in the entire continent and come up with recommendations for these large investment firms uh, so that they could get the best value out of their properties. So, hey, if they trusted me to do that, I hope you will trust me with your situation too. Throughout my entire career, just about, I've been a licensed realtor, both here and in, and in Colorado. And I've worn a lot of hats. In fact, it's hard to find a realtor who has the depth of experience that I do. All in all, I've played a role in something like 5,000 successful transactions, which means to you, you have a high likelihood you will achieve success. So before you sign on with your brother-in-law's third cousin, because she's family, Consider if you really want to put the uh, largest financial transaction of your life in the hands of, well, your brother-in-law's third cousin who just got their license. Bottom line, there are good reasons why 50% of my business is repeat business and another 25% is referral. My clients tell me I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you'd like to know everything there is to know about moving to or living in the greater Indianapolis area, then be sure to tune in every Tuesday as we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. Then on Thursday, we walk through existing homes for sale. And then on the weekend, we take a look at what it's like to actually live in Indiana. Now keep in mind, whether you're buying or selling, I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. If you found this helpful, you'll love this next video. Watch this one right now.